most people, cancer seems like a distant threat, not something that's likely to happen to them. The reality is a little more jarring. About half of all men and one third of all women in the United States will develop cancer in their lifetimes. Today, millions of people are living with cancer or have had cancer. However, many people don't know exactly what cancer is or how it occurs. So we asked around at Johns Hopkins University to see if we could find out exactly what people there knew about cancer. It's like a mutation, isn't it? It's a mutation and then it like doesn't go into apoptosis. So then it just like divides continuously. Couldn't tell you. Yeah. People in my family have cancer, so I'd say, like, probably higher than normal. It doesn't make me feel anything, because you have to die of something. So if we're talking, you know, cancer at 25 versus cancer at 75, different things. It's not like I think about it all the time, but I mean, it's in the back of your mind. The human body is made up of thousands of billions of cells. These cells structure the tissues and organs of the body. They are constantly undergoing replication to replace old, damaged, or defective cells. Cancer occurs when a normal cell has a mutation that disrupts its cell cycle, giving it the ability to proliferate in an uncontrolled manner. This uncontrolled cell growth leads to the growth of a tumor, where each new cell contains the same defective DNA. These growth cells, or tumors, can either be benign, meaning they are less harmful to the individual, or malignant, meaning they have the ability to invade into the nearby tissues and metastasize, or spread into the distant tissues. While metastasis is a complex process, it is often described as the end result of five steps. Altered adhesion and invasion, where the cells rapidly migrate into the tissue. Intravisation, where the cells enter the blood vessels. Survival in the circulation, extravasation, where the cells exit the blood vessels, and finally seeding at a distant site, leading to metastatic colonization. In case you don't believe us, we talked to an expert on brain cancer, Dr. Quinones Inojosa, a surgeon at Johns Hopkins Bayview Medical Center. So I would say that cancer is a disease where cells have lost their ability to regulate, and they become extraordinarily prolific the fight against cancer is hardly a new one. We have known about cancer for a really long time, but it's only recently that we have been measuring its impact on society and focusing on a way to find a cure. The newest method of trying to tackle this disease is through the use of nanotechnology. Use of nanotechnology has been one of the greatest and, uh, and most uh, important things that I personally have done with my laboratory, interacting with some of the greatest minds, biomedical engineer and an engineer, and I was like to understand this process of migration by using nanotechnology. Nanotechnology is also used in the treatment of cancer. Typical cancer treatments are not specifically targeted at cancerous cells. Often, they kill healthy cells along with the cancerous ones. The death of these healthy cells is what causes the unpleasant side effects that are often associated with cancer therapy, such as hair loss, nausea, and weight loss. So scientists have found a way to place drugs inside of a nanocarrier to help protect the healthy cells. These nanocarriers can then be targeted to the tumors using antibodies. Antibodies function by recognizing specific proteins and attaching to them, so they can be used to target tumors in this manner. Using these antibodies, the nanocarriers are brought to the cancer cells and taken up. This allows for the cancerous cells to be killed, leaving the healthy cells mostly undamaged. If we can find a cure for brain cancer. I mean, I'm not saying that we're going to find it tomorrow, five years from now, 15 years from now, but I would say that if we persist, if we persevere, if we are able to see beyond our field and bring these other fields into our field, and we are willing to venture into other fields with the fusion of ideas, if it is my belief that we will be able to break down those barriers and understand the process by which brain cancer, in this case, continues to be the most aggressive type of disease. The most important part of the fight against cancer is that everyone needs to be involved. Physicians, scientists, patients, technicians in the hospital, everyone. This fight requires all of us to step out of our comfort zone and talk to each other. We need to discuss the progress that we have all made and how together we can move the fight along.